Hello everyone and welcome. We are sitting inside of the 2022 Subaru WRX. So checking out the new WRX, there's three things I wanna focus on for this video. First of all, I wanna talk about the new engine. I wanna talk about how this car compares with the previous current generation WRX. And I also wanna get into you know whether or not this makes sense to upgrade to if you have the current gen WRX or if this makes sense to get into as a new car. So starting off with the engine again, we have the four cylinder boxer engine uh, that is tried and true with Subaru. It's now a bit larger in this WRX. So going from two liters to 2.4 liters, that's thanks to a larger bore, meaning the cylinders are now wider. The distance, the pistons move back and forth uh, is the same. So the stroke is the same, but the cylinders are wider. So you get about 20% more displacement. This is still using a twin scroll turbocharger, uh, but boost is now now down actually so instead of 15.9 psi being peak boost for the two liter which was used in the current gen uh, wrx now the new gen is going towards 12 psi of boost as the peak so the engine's about 20 percent larger but you're down about 25 percent on boost so what does this mean for torque and power so i'm going to put up on the screen uh, the torque curve from 2000 rpm to 5200 rpm and that is at 258 pound feet and then if we go to the new wrx the one we're in right now Oh, it's the same. It's the exact same as the old one. So if you extend this out, uh, then you will notice the difference between the previous engine and the current engine. And that is at 5,600 RPM, you now have 271 horsepower instead of 268. So three more horsepower, same torque, very similar torque curve. Uh, though with the larger engine, you get a little bit more after and a little bit more before as far as the torque curve, but peaks are very similar. So to me, that made me wonder, you know, why are we limited at this 258 pound feet? And so I asked this to Subaru, um, you know, like, is there something with the system, the transmission, the all-wheel drive system, is there something limiting that torque from being higher? Because this engine is used in the Ascent, it's used in the Outback, and there are variations, of course, there's differences between the engines, but very similar engine used in all of these vehicles, and they have higher torque in the Ascent and in the Outback. And so, you know, is there something limiting it? Here? and that's not the case uh, it, it really sounds like the reason why torque output is exactly the same as the previous generation WRX is that that's still better than the competition so it's kind of a bummer that you don't have more an improvement here from a torque standpoint but when this car is targeting the Civic SI and the Golf GTI and it's still significantly ahead of them in power and torque then I guess you can kind of understand why Subaru has decided to just kind of keep things level. Personally, I wish that there would have been a little bit more improvement, uh, but we have switched over from the two liter to this 2.4 liter. And so I asked them about that as well, you know, uh, why this decision to go to it. And their argument is that there's a better drivability to this 2.4 liter engine. And I'm gonna get into some of the advantages of it. I think another worthwhile thing worth mentioning is that, you know, that two liter turbo engine used in the WRX, that turbo engine, the turbo variant of it is used in nothing else. So now that this engine is used, you know, it's used in the Ascent, it's used in the Outback, it's used in the WRX. So it makes sense from a simplicity standpoint of, you know, all the engine variants we're going to offer to have it be something that already exists and is in other models. So if power and torque are virtually the same, are there any advantages to this larger engine? And yes, there are four advantages actually. Uh, so the first one being, you know, when you're not in boost, when you first put your foot down to the ground and you don't have that turbocharger spooled up yet, when you're not in boost, you're going to have better power with a larger displacement engine. So that's just a simple advantage. Uh, second advantage being you're going to get better response out of this uh, because it is larger and it's running lower boost. So if you think about two very different engine styles, a large naturally aspirated engine and a small turbocharged engine and both of those engines are making the same power well the response that you get from those engines is going to be very different the large naturally aspirated engine is going to have really good response the small turbocharged engine is going to take time spool up that turbocharger and get that power down ultimately they have the same power but it takes you longer to get there with the turbo engine so you can think about a sliding scale between those two and with this 
we're moving closer to that larger naturally aspirated engine, meaning our response is improving. We're not as reliant on the turbo for the power because the engine is bigger. So lower boost, we're not waiting as long to get to these really high boost numbers. Uh, and so you're getting that response quicker. And Subaru has shown the curves. I mean, these things are getting to peak torque sooner. They've got a new electronic wastegate and electronic bypass control for the air intake side of this. So it is an engine that gets to peak torque sooner and you get more torque sooner simply from the fact that this is a larger engine. So better performance when you're not in boost, better response and getting to that peak boost. A third small advantage, uh, this one is only recommending 91 octane versus the previous generation WRX uh, saying it required 91 octane. So because you're running lower boost in this and the same compression ratio as the previous engine, you're able to get away with using a, a lower quality gasoline as far as the octane rating. Uh, but that said, they certainly still recommend you want maximum performance, you should go with 91 or above for the octane rating. And then the fourth and final advantage I think of this engine is just the tuning possibilities, right? This engine already has more boost in it in other applications within the Subaru lineup. So you know it can handle it. Another thing, this engine is used in the ascent for you know towing 5,000 pounds. You're not towing anything with this WRX. So to me that says from a durability standpoint, this thing's gonna be in a better place than that two liter boxer engine, the engine this is replacing for tuning, for adding power to it. You've got a larger engine to start with and you're starting at a lower boost. So up that boost, if you want to tune this thing and make more power, I feel like you're at a better starting point to do so versus the previous generation WRX. Now moving on to the transmission. So both of them have been updated. You still have the option of a six speed manual transmission, which was what we are driving right now. And then there's also what they're calling, I believe the Subaru performance transmission. Essentially it's their CVT, but it's a new version of their CVT, much improved. It has better uh, downshift rev matching. If you're using the paddle shifters for these simulated gears, these specific stepped ratios that it will choose within that CVT. Uh, they're really proud of the improvements they've made to it. So you know, on the, the previous generation WRX, for me, it's still really no question which one you want to choose. You want to choose the manual. It's lighter, it's quicker, it gets better fuel efficiency, uh, and it costs less. And I believe that's still going to be the case across the board here. Uh, I have not yet had the ability to try out the CVT, uh, but you are going to have advantages with the manual transmission. And apparently the take rate on the manual transmission, good for all of y'all who have done this and contributed towards it, 85%. I don't know of a car that offers a manual and an automatic and has a take rate that high on the manual. So great that people are choosing it. And I think, you know, there, there are a lot of advantages to it. So I think that makes sense. And good news with this new six-speed manual transmission, first and second, as well as six gear, they're identical as far as the ratios and your final drive ratios are the same, but they're giving you a more aggressive third gear, fourth gear, and fifth gear. So, you know, keeping you within that power band as you get into those high RPMs and you're shifting through the gears, uh, more aggressive third through fifth. So I like to see that. I feel like it's rare that you get offered more aggressive gearing as you get new models. And Subaru has done it, so great to see that with the transmission. Now, the transmission choice you make fundamentally changes this car. I mean, it's very different, and not just because of the transmission, but also because of the all-wheel drive system. So with the manual transmission, you have a viscous coupling center differential, and so you have a nominal 50-50 torque split, 50% to the front, 50% to the rear. If one of those axles starts to slip, then you start to send more power to the axle that has the grip. With the CVT, you have a planetary style center differential which is using an electronically controlled hydraulic clutch to actuate and that has a nominal split of 45% of the torque to the front and 55% of the torque to the rear so a bit of a rear bias with the CVT give it a little lively uh, feel to it and so either way you're always going to be driving both it's not like one of those systems where you have an on-demand it's just driving the front axle and then when it needs it it sends it to the rear no matter what these are true all-wheel drive vehicles that are always driving all the wheels. Now, as far as other mechanical differences versus the previous generation, uh, in the rear with the rear brakes, they're slightly larger and they are now ventilated instead of being solid discs. Uh, also, the steering has been updated to a dual pinion steering system with the steering assist now off the axis. So they take that steering assist and they put it directly on that rack rather than in the column. 
you get better feel overall and you have a quicker steering ratio now. So as far as the steering's concerned, um, I don't know if I would say super communicative as far as the feel of it overall, but from a responsiveness, uh, it does feel very quick and it's good. I mean, I don't have complaints here with the steering. To me, I enjoy it. We were on some really twisty roads today uh, and it's been just fine. Now, this is a sports car, so I know what everyone's wondering. You're wondering, hey, what, what kind of fuel economy can I expect in this bad boy? So the manual is actually doing worse than before, which I don't find uh, all that surprising considering the engine is now larger. The CVT is actually doing better than before. Uh, and if you were to compare the two, the new manual is still better than the new CVT. So the manual is the way to go if you want the best fuel economy and you want the quickest car and you want the lightest car uh, and you want the most enjoyable car to drive. So the manual is still the way to go in my opinion, though I have not yet driven the new CVT. You do get a slightly larger fuel tank now and something that I'm excited about is they've actually added ground clearance. So instead of 4.9 inches like the previous generation, we are now going to 5.4 inches. So half an inch of ground clearance added and I like this. I mean the 2014 STI had 5.9. This is still half an inch under that but this is talked about as this rally car and then when it doesn't have much ground clearance it's like you can barely get off any road uh, and expect to, to you know go over bumps and things like that so now that they've added a little bit of ground clearance I do like that about it and another very surprising thing that is very enjoyable about this car is that the weight is nearly identical to the previous generation and so you know this is a larger car overall you've got more space on the inside you've got more cargo space it's wider it's a little bit longer uh, and yet the weight is nearly identical and again between between the manual and the automatic, you're looking at about 130 pound difference. So, you know, that is a significant difference of weight savings if you do go with the manual versus the auto. So what is this thing like to drive? Well, I've talked a little bit about the steering, uh, the brakes I really like, and I think Subaru generally does a pretty good job with brakes as far as the pedal feel. Great, nice linear feel as you get into it and the stopping power that's associated with how hard you're pressing. I think the brakes feel super solid. The throttle also I think is much improved over the previous generation. One of the problems I had, and I don't know if they fixed this in the later years of the WRX, but one of the problems I had with the previous generation with a two liter engine is that if you gave it 50% throttle, it would get to full boost eventually. And this, I've been messing with it and looking at this boost gauge here, and you can see it actually holds back a little bit. So you seem to have better control of torque delivery with this new car and that you can be more precise with your power delivery and where you put your foot on that pedal versus how much torque you're getting. You know, you give it halfway down and I'm not getting peak boost versus I then plan it and then I start to see that boost increase. So the throttle control is improved over the previous generation. You also have better uh, from a rev hang standpoint, you know, it's not nearly like it was previously. Uh, you get a quicker drop of those revs and so I love to see that uh, from a manual drivability standpoint, that's a nice big improvement. Okay, let's talk suspension, noise, vibration, harshness. So this is something that I thought was going to feel different than it does. Uh, this is an entirely new platform for the WRX. So, I mean, this is a completely new car and you know, the, the body is, uh, much better optimized, much better design overall. They, they've improved things, uh, pretty much across the board in this car. And to me, it still feels pretty stiff. And I think part of that is they, they kind of want to keep this characteristic of this sporty to drive uh, raw feel to the WRX. To me, it's still a little raw. Uh, maybe you like that, maybe you don't, but I would say it has a stiff suspension, pretty stiff ride. As far as noise in here, I don't think it's too bad. Um, I think noise level is fine. Visibility is excellent, which I like. But as far as the stiffness of the ride, I mean, you're still going to feel the bumps in this thing. And maybe some of the competitors are kind of trying to soften that suspension and, and tune a bit of that out. Um, Subaru wants you to feel things. So you do feel it as you're going through the road. 
From an interior standpoint, it's a significant upgrade over the last gen. You've got nicer seats. Uh, they got rid of the all leather seats in favor of these micro suede seats, which have better grip. You know, as you're going through corners, it's going to keep you situated better. They've got better bolsters now on the seats. So I like the changes they've made. You also have a nice large screen here with Apple CarPlay. So interior is a nice improvement uh, over the last gen. So now now finally just getting into the question is it worth it so pricing hasn't been announced yet but I'm sure it's going to be competitive with the things it's going up against and when you look at this car it reminds me of when I bought my Subaru WRX STI a 2014 hatchback and I waited for the 2015 to be announced and then once I heard about how you know few differences there were uh, from the 14 to the 15 and they dropped the hatchback I was like all right I'm getting the hatchback I'm keeping the old gen rather than going to the new gen uh, and, and you might look at this on paper and say okay you know it's it's not a, a huge upgrade as far as versus the previous generation to this generation is it is it that big of a deal this is a completely different rework though. I mean, it's not like the 14 to 15 STI. This is a much larger difference in vehicle from the, you know, 21 WRX to the 2022 WRX. That said, if I had the previous generation WRX, I wouldn't feel like this was enough of a change for it to be worth it. This is a better car in my opinion, um, but I don't, I wouldn't say if I had the current generation WRX, this would convince me to upgrade. That said, if you're, if you're out of the market and you're looking and you're maybe thinking between the two, this is certainly the better vehicle. They have improved the WRX. Um, so it, it's good to see that. I wish there had been a little bit more power, but you know, that comes with the territory of who they're competing against. And if their competitors aren't raising their power all that much, then, you know, Subaru doesn't really have to do it either. So unfortunate, but uh, I understand where they're coming from when they're looking at the SI and they're looking at the GTI and those are still, you know, in those low 200 numbers uh, versus, you know, this is at 271. So you get good torque, you get plenty of power, you've got a great all wheel drive system, you can drive it in any weather. Uh, it's a solid all around sports sedan uh, at an affordable price. So for that, you know, kudos. It's, it's a cool car and I'm glad this thing does exist now the styling on the other hand I mean that's a subjective measure so I can't tell you whether or not it's good you have to just look at it and tell me whether or not you think it's good thank you all so much for watching if you have any questions or comments of course feel free to leave them below